Hey folks, I saw I missed last week, but last week I wasn't feeling good. I had, came down with a sore throat, couldn't hardly breathe. It got sick. But we're going to the history of car options. And like I said, I apologize for last week. Uh, let's get back to today's options, uh, which is kind of an option that is is what preferred and manufacturing at the time. Now you don't get as one as many as you did the other, which is your transmission. Back when you first started, you had transmissions you need for getting moving, built your cars, your trucks. Motorcycles, even some boats, have them. In, we're going to start off with the first car, the original Benz motor car. It was a two-speed in the 1800s. Not your traditional looking car like you see today. And for, for until, until like the 40s, late 30s, early 40s, you didn't have automatics. You had to learn to drive a multiple speed or a manual transmission vehicle. Um, sorry, my nose is still a little bit clogged up. So yeah, I'm gonna have to take some medicine. But, With the um, with the actual transmissions being manual, you learn to drive three speeds. Two, they had two speeds and three speeds for the most part. Bigger trucks got maybe four speeds through the fifties. So the but the main was three speeds was more common than anything in later in the early 1900s to the early late for mid 40s or to the 40s when the first automatic came into play. Now automatic has a variety of them like the CVT, the four speed with an overdrive. The three speed, four speed. Uh, they also have the dual clutch ones. They've got you know, now they got them up to what ten speeds. Yes, you see me always using my cup. But the multiple speed cars, transmiss, all my transmissions you got nowadays, and all my are more relevant compared to what manuals are. But you still get manuals. But you had the three speed on the tree, which ran up until the 80s. Then you had the four speeds and five speeds, which five speeds were in most in most common cars until mid late 2000s early 2010s when they went to a six speed um, you have the choice of manual or automatic you have the choice of with some straight drives you have maybe a three speed actual transmission and then a two speed rear end which was common in like the B Max and some of the big trucks. But you always have your options and back in the day you had the option of R Mac was actually higher in the late in the sixties and seventies than it was for the actual four speed five, or three speed transmission or manual transmissions. You had the, the what some people call the rock crusher four speed, 
which was actually a three short gears and one long gear transmission. Beautiful for, for street racing, but crappy gear for daily driving to me. <laughs> yes, I drove one. <laughs> I've driven, I had a five speed. I loved it. Because one of my first cars that I personally had the my name in the title of the car in my name was a five speed. The fifth gear I barely used in the on the street. When I had hit the highway, that's when my fifth gear hit, because the fifth gear is usually your overdrive, which means the gear ratio between it and to put out was lower than a one to one. And the longer it takes, that can stretch out long before you can actually, and keeps your RPMs down so you can run higher speeds to lower, excuse me, to lower stuff. This ain't gonna be a long video, I'm gonna tell you that now. Most every day, the cars you can buy right off the lot on now automatics. Used to be, you couldn't buy automatics off the lot. It was always manuals. Or you, they had a few, sometimes some lots would carry a few manuals, but, or automatics back in, back in the 60s and 70s. Because in the 80s, everybody got to have, start having automatics. Like your tiny sports cars. They had what they call gated shifters, which means when you shift, you had to be you had actual location to location blocked off, except for that little crossover to go to the next set of gears. Your transmissions, they yes, you lose power from the flywheel to the wheels because of your transmission and your rear end gear. So yes, transmissions can you can even get what they call. You also have when you got four wheel drive, you got what they call a sometimes some people call it secondary transmission. It is your gear ratio for front and rear differentials to get to, which is your high and your low. All when you ever you are in full high, you can pretty much run it. Highway speed still, but once you get into full low, it's what they start calling granny gears. It's a reduction that was re that reduces your gear, your power ratio, way down to give you more torque. You have with and with a straight drive, you're gonna have a clutch, you're gonna have throw out bearings, you're gonna have secondary what they call a slave cylinder to the master cylinder of the clutch assembly, where our match you got what they call a torque converter. When, when, and then you also have options like your Lenko, which is a straight drive that's mixed to a automatic setup almost. Only time you have to use the clutch is actually on the first gear. Everything else is right there. Yank it back, it's, slams into the next gear, and instead of having one scepter, you have four. Because <laughs> most line codes are five speeds. Or you have three scepters with one clutch time. Good for drag racing. <laughs> uh, you got what they call reverse setup, where on a five speed, where normally where most cars have the reverse all the way over to the passenger seat and back. That's usually where this is where most reverses are on five speeds. But on some five speeds, actually, your first gear is actually your reverse is actually all the way to the right, up to the front is your reverse, then straight back is your first. Yes, you got to learn your process with your clutch your, and gas because depends on what type of car you got 
and how the gear is set up, you can actually start off in second gear, sometimes even third. All depends on your driving style, your motor, and your transmission setup on gearing. So, right now as it sits, we are working on, I'm working on trying to figure out how to get some demonstration stuff. I got lucky because I was able to go to a, a hardware store to get paint samples for my last video y'all saw. I'm working on getting more stuff. I'm just having to go through and figure out how to get it. I'm doing this, like I said, on a budget. So y'all have a good day. If you want information, you can always hit me up at History of Cars Options at gmail.com. And I'll see y'all next week.